In this video, we'll be exploring the inaugural hull of the stunning Moon 60 Power Catamaran, a CE Category A liveaboard Explorer Catamaran that I'm sure will prove to be a great hit. Thanks to Moon Yachts and S6 Marine, I had the incredible opportunity to experience this majestic power cat firsthand during a voyage from Essex to St Catherine Dock in the heart of London. As the wind gusted at speeds of up to 35 knots, I found my happy place on the flybridge getting battered by the wind and tasting the salt of the Thames estuary, much to the amusement of my fellow crewmates. Boarding the Moon 60 via the starboard swim platform, I was taken aback by the sheer scope of this boat. Every aspect of the boat appears over-engineered, helping to create the sense and feeling that the Moon 60 can take on some big seas. The tender is launched and recovered via the big platform that lowers down into the water. During the launch event in St Catherine Docks, one of the co-owners of Moon Yachts, Michael, gave me a demonstration of the lift in action. Not only is it quick, but it is also incredibly quiet. After ascending the three steps, you enter the large cockpit that is afforded some protection from the elements thanks to the overhang from the flybridge. There's ample seating here for guests to sit and relax. The high-low table with its industrial size retractable columns and everything else on the Moon 60 is designed and built in-house. The back of the seating arrangement can be moved by the touch of a button so that the seating on the transom can also double up as a sun pad area. Just quickly, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's thanks to you, my subscribers, that I'm able to bring you videos like this one. On the port side of the cockpit is a sink and serving area that can be neatly tucked away when not in use. Forward of the serving area is the entrance to the crew accommodation. Making our way forward along the port side, note just how wide the side decks are. If an owner wanted to, then the guardrails could also be increased in height. The unique design of the superstructure made it possible to level the saloon and the main deck creating a sun deck that is the largest in its class. Storage space is abundant up here with lots of seating and of course sun pads. When underway everything can be neatly and securely stowed away so that when the inevitable storm finds you whilst you are out at sea there's no risk of anything being lost over the side. Note also the door leading into the saloon and the helm position on the starboard side. Having two young children, I would opt for a different guardrail on the bow, but as mentioned earlier, with everything being designed and built in-house by Moon Yachts, this sort of request would not be a problem. The twin L-shaped seating with indirect lighting illuminating the deck is a fantastic place to relax. The Moon 60 has a beam of 9.64 meters or just over 31 feet and has a draft of just 0.9 meters, which is just under three feet. With its shallow draft, the Moon 60 easily glides into those elusive spots that larger vessels simply can't access. If this was your boat, where would you take it and why? Let me know in the comments below. Before we head inside, let's check out the huge flybridge. The hardtop ensures that guests can seek refuge from the sun during the midday heat, not that we had any hot weather during our trip in a chilly March. There are two tinted skylights in the hardtop, which I think is a really nice feature as you still get to gaze up at the sky, or in my case, the radar mast. Thanks to these inboard staircases, the flybridge on the Moon 60 can be accessed via both the port and starboard side. There's an amidships helm position with three heated seats, as well as two L-shaped seating areas and a jacuzzi. The jacuzzi is flanked by yet more sun pads. If you've got a boat and you're thinking of heading to London, then I cannot recommend St. Catherine Docks enough. It's a fantastic place. The expertly designed helm boasts all the essentials for seamless navigation and precision control, 
whether cruising the open seas or skillfully manoeuvring in confined spaces. Adorned with three expansive multifunction displays, the helm ensures an intuitive and engaging experience whilst at the wheel. There is also a retractable TV hidden away behind the helm. What a great place to sit back and relax as you watch your favourite movie, surrounded of course by your favourite people. And now let us head inside, starting of course in the saloon. As mentioned before, an owner is afforded a high level of customization when it comes to the general arrangement of the Moon 60. Hull number one is configured with a galley located in the port aft hull, and we'll check that out in a minute. As you enter the saloon through the double sliding doors from the cockpit, you are immediately met with a spacious and incredibly comfortable area. On our trip from Essex Marina to St Catherine Docks, despite the 35 knots of wind and choppy seas, I felt incredibly comfortable in this area, both in terms of the stability of the boat and the low amounts of noise from the engines and the hulls. There is ample seating here both for dining and sitting back, relaxing and enjoying that view. The large windows on the port and starboard side of the saloon are tinted for extra privacy when you are alongside. On the starboard side you will find a generously sized plush sofa that tempts even the most steadfast travellers to indulge in a few hours of restful slumber, especially considering the early start we had on our journey. Located on the port side, you'll discover an inviting dining area featuring a cosy sofa and stylish freestanding chairs. Throughout our seven hour voyage, this welcoming space became our prime gathering spot, where we engaged in lively conversations, sharing our passion for all things nautical. In the centre of the saloon is an almost invisible hatch that leads down into a large storage area. I would use this space to store large items such as luggage. And by the way, if you need some new suitcases, then remember to check out my Amazon stores. I will leave a link in the video description. Next we come to the helm position which is located on the starboard side. I was lucky enough to take the wheel just to get a feel for the boat as we motored into the brisk southwesterly winds. I found the helm position to be comfortable and well laid out. The controls for the twin 715 horsepower Cummins engines were light and very responsive. The steering was also very responsive and agile and I really like the sports style ship's wheel. The seating is comfortable and I could easily sit here for long periods of time. There is an autopilot fitted but for our trip the controls were left in manual. There are three multi-function displays which, as well as showing navigation and engine management information, also display CCTV images from the engine room and the upper deck. The controls for the twin engines are located to starboard of the helm position just behind some power and USB charging points. Before we check out the accommodation, let us have a look at the galley which can be found in the port aft hull. You can access the galley via this staircase. In this decent sized galley you will find all the main appliances and amenities needed for long distance liveable passage making including an induction hob, sink, plenty of storage space and a tall fridge freezer. And what a fantastic view as you prepare your meals. If you owned a Moon 60, would you prefer to have the galley down here or would you position the galley in the saloon? Let me know in the comments below. If you are wondering what the view out of the three large galley windows looks like whilst underway, I shot this footage as we powered up to over 20 knots. This is certainly a view that I would never get tired of even while peeling bucket loads of potatoes. And now before we check out the engine room, let's have a look at the accommodation. 
In the port hull are two incredibly comfortable and luxurious double cabins, both with en suites. As we descend the stairs into the port hull from the saloon, let's turn left and head off. I was lucky to be on board during a picturesque sunset, which allowed me to witness firsthand how the ingenious use of indirect lighting throughout the living spaces creates a serene ambient and soothing atmosphere. The top-notch luxurious finish and plush carpets genuinely conveyed a sense of comfort and elegance within the cabin. As a light sleeper, I'm confident that drifting off to sleep would be effortless in this sumptuous space. There are plenty of windows both in the hull and thanks to the privacy skylights on the upper deck on the overhead, it is worth pointing out that all of the windows in the accommodation areas are made with privacy glass. Each of the four en suites has a large shower with a rain head fitting and with a freshwater capacity of 1,500 litres, which is around 400 US gallons, coupled with the fact that the freshwater maker can churn out around 200 litres of water per hour, I would spend a lot of time sitting in the shower. Plenty of mirrors are dotted around the cabin, which add to the sense of depth throughout the accommodation areas. Being six foot four inches, I hate using the bathroom in tight and cramped spaces, but the use of space on board the Moon 60 is so expertly done that there is plenty of room when it comes to needing to move around the bathroom. Now, let us head forward along the port hull to the next cabin before heading over to the starboard hull, which is where we will find the master cabin as well as another double cabin. It's worth noting that the elevated beds provide a unique sleeping experience with their heightened positioning. All beds are orientated outboard, allowing guests to fully appreciate the breathtaking views through expansive windows, whether the yacht is cruising, docked or at anchor. As we explore the Moon 60's accommodations, it's immediately apparent that the living spaces exude the highest quality and luxurious touches. The tastefully appointed cabins showcase elegant furnishings and sumptuous linings, promising a restful night's sleep for every guest on board. But as ever, I'm interested to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. And remember, any questions or queries which are sent with a super thanks will always be guaranteed a response. Now it's time to head over to the starboard hull and check out the accommodation in that area. The thoughtful layout on hole number one of the Moon 60 optimizes space and privacy, ensuring a comfortable and tranquil retreat for all. Expansive windows invite ample natural light and offer stunning views, immersing you in your surroundings as you motor along. And now before checking out the engine room, let's head to the master cabin, which is located midships in the starboard hull. As we step into the Moon 60's master cabin, the sheer size and grandeur of this opulent retreat becomes strikingly evident. The numerous expansive windows adorning this sanctuary not only let in an abundance of natural light, but also offer breathtaking panoramic views immersing the owner and his or her guests in their scenic surroundings. Customization lies at the heart of the Moon 60 experience with various configuration options available to suit your unique preferences. From the general arrangement to the finer details, the design can be tailored to create the ultimate personalized haven.
For more information on the different configurations and possibilities, be sure to visit the Moon Yachts website. To make it even more convenient for you, I'll include a direct link in the video description below. And now it's that time for a moment that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for, a look around the engine room. As mentioned earlier in the video, hole number one of the Moon 60 power catamaran is fitted with twin 715 horsepower Cummins engines. I've heard it said before that these powerhouses could run continually for 24 hours a day for years at a time, so it is easy to see why they have been picked for a boat such as an Explorer Cat. She has enough capacity for 7,000 litres of fuel, and at 9 knots the engines consume around 20 litres of fuel per engine, giving the boat a range of approximately 1,500 nautical miles. But if you reduce the speed to a displacement speed of around 8 knots, then the consumption reduces to 12 litres per hour, giving the boat a range of around 2,500 nautical miles. Decrease the speed further still to 6 knots, then again depending on load and conditions, you could expect a range of around 3,000 nautical miles. Michael, one of the co-owners of Moon Yachts, explained that if an owner wants to, Moon could fit larger fuel tanks for an even greater range. But if you increase the throttle to the boat's top speed of 20 knots, then the burn rate of fuel increases to around 300 litres of fuel per hour. The Moon 60 has a displacement of 42 tonnes, can hold 600 litres of grey water and 600 litres of black water. She has a length overall of 18.32 metres. If you were to commission the build of hole number 2 of the Moon 60, which engine configuration would you go for and why? As ever, let me know in the comments below. You can also access a small lazarette from the cockpit that houses a washer dryer and more storage space. And what about price? Well, a Moon 60 power catamaran could be yours, starting from 3.8 million euros, which is around 4.1 million US dollars, or around 3.3 million pounds sterling. Believe it or not, the build time for a Moon 60, including four weeks for sea trials, is only six months. If you want to find out more, click on the link at the bottom of the video description. Thanks for watching and a thanks to my wife for helping me out with the filming during the launch event in London. A big thanks to Michael and his team at Moon Yachts for hosting me and to the fantastic people at S6 Marine for inviting me along. On a bit of a side note, me and Michael have agreed to take out one of his brand new Moon ribs in some pretty gnarly conditions whilst both wearing a tuxedo. So make sure you subscribe to my channel because that's something you probably won't want to miss. In a few days time I'll be flying over to Spain to make a video about this beautiful Anache Trulli yacht. So again make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. To stay up to date with what I'm doing and where I'm going feel free to come and follow me on Instagram. I'll leave a link to my Instagram account in the video description. As always I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. If you'd like to become a member of my channel which is basically YouTube's version of Patreon you'll get access to exclusive content and lots of other perks. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the comments below. And a big welcome to Mark Adams and Martin Phillips, who are two of my most recent channel members. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. 
I've also picked two of my previous videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.